I will invite you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 from verse 15 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 15 through 20. Let me read it for you. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is drawn to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is drawn to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. How do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? whom you have from God, and you are not your own. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to present your word to your people today, Father. Knowing, O oh Lord, that within that text, O oh Lord, is not just for them, it is for me as well, O oh Lord. To take a own look at my own life and how I am living for you, O oh Lord. So I do not come, O oh Lord, at all. Could you say that I can do it by myself, but I come, O oh Lord, in the power of your spirit to stand before your people, Father. May I decrease, O oh Lord, and you increase. May you speak to me. May you speak to your people the way you see fit, O oh Lord. As a loving Father, you know what we need, Father. So I ask, O oh Lord, that your spirit will be with us. That, O oh Lord, you will edify your people today, Father. May all the, the, may all the glory be unto your name. Please we pray. Amen. What is the church? To ask that question differently, what is the nature of the church? The church is a social community made up of people who are reconciled with God and one another. In his epistles, the apostle Paul uses three primary images to depict the church as a community of believers. He describes the church as the family of God. He describes the church as the body of Christ. And he describes the church as the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's the nature of the church. That's who we are as a people. We are the family of God. We are the body of Christ. And we are the temple of his Holy Spirit. These three images complement each other. This building is not the church. It is a place where the church gathers, but it is not the church. What we are sitting in today is not the sanctuary. Even though when you walk through those doors, you see the word sanctuary there. 
But it is not the sanctuary. If you are saved, you are the sanctuary. If you are saved, you know Christ. You are the sanctuary of God. The word temple in verse 19 refers not to the whole place of the temple, but just to the holy of holies, the place where God dwelled. What Paul is trying to tell us is that we are the dwelling place of the Almighty God. Somehow, many Christians, and not just in the U.S., it's all over the world, have the opinion that what we do has no effect on us spiritually. Therefore, everywhere we go, everything that we do, everything that touches us, in effect, touches God. If you are saved, God lives in you. Where you go, what you do, what you say, in effect, touches God because he dwells in you. That is why Paul tells these Corinthian Christians that they are God's temple. He reminded them that they are God's temple. It appears that many were using their bodies for immoral purposes, for immoral things, and were defiling their temple. For instance, we know in Corinth, based on the history, there was a temple, the temple of Diana. Diana was the goddess of sex, the goddess of love. In the temple of Diana, there were over a thousand female prostitutes. To worship Diana, you had to have sexual intercourse with one of the temple prostitutes. And many in the Corinthian church were used to that lifestyle. The reason that God has saved their souls and that their body was something different. They had the mindset that said, what I do with my body has no impact on my spiritual work. This couldn't be further from the truth. God will not dwell in a dirty temple. God will not dwell in a dirty temple. That's what the Apostle Paul is getting at here in this text. This morning, I want to focus for a while on this concept, on this biblical truth of Christians being the temple of God. In doing so, I will draw some comparison between these earthly temples, our bodies, and the temple that stood there in Jerusalem. The main idea that Paul was trying to convey in this passage is this. It may be your body. It may be my body. But it is still God's temple. There are several comparisons between our bodies and the original temple of God. By comparing our bodies, these earthly, fleshly temples to the original temple in Jerusalem, we can better understand what it means to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. We hear that all the time. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let's spend some time this morning to know and to learn what it means to be the temple of the Holy Spirit. So first, being the temple of the Holy Spirit 
means you are a place of consecration. The temple in Jerusalem was a place wholly dedicated to God and his glory. Nothing that defiled was allowed on the grounds of the temple. When something out of the ordinary occurred, God took immediate step to take care of the problem. For instance, we have in Leviticus 10, verse 1 and 2, Nadab and Abihu, these sons of Eliezer, what did they do? They offered strange fire before the Lord. And what did God do to them? He killed them. It appears from the text in Leviticus 10, verse 8 through 11, that Nadab and Abihu, what did they do? They were guilty of drunkenness before the Lord. And after that, they went to offer strange fires on the altar. And God take them out. Be that as it may, the earthly temple was a place set apart for God and his glory. These earthly bodies we dwell in are also set apart for his glory. According to our text, no one in this room has the right to use his or her body for anything other than what which glorifies God. Let me repeat that. No one in this room has the right to use his or her body for anything other than that which glorifies God. Here is what the text says in, verse, in verses 19 and 20. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. We have been bought with a price. Jesus went to Calvary and paid the price for our sins. That's why later on we're going to take part of the Lord's table. It is a reminder that you are not your own. You were bought at a price, and it was the blood of Jesus. When we came to Jesus for salvation, we gave up all claims to our body and what we desire to do with it. Say that again. When you came to Jesus for salvation, you gave up all claims to your body and what you desire to do with it. We do not belong to ourselves. We belong to the Lord. Therefore, regardless of what we are doing, if it does not bring honor and glory to God, then it is sin. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31, we read, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. And in that verse, you say, whether you eat or drink, please. Do not overeat and say that you're doing it for the glory of God. <laughs> okay? okay? All right, don't, don't do that. <laughs> because uh, overeating is a sin too. Okay? All right? So, so whatever you do, make sure you have that in mind, that you are doing it for the glory of God. So if I see you, you go to McDonald's after the service, or you go to Burger King, you're not going to do it for the glory of God. Okay? You're going to do it for your own belly. Not just a place of consecration. Being the temple of the Holy Spirit also means you are a place of worship. The temple in Jerusalem 
was a place where people gathered to worship God. They came to the temple and glorified the Lord. It was a place where songs were sung. A place where prayers were prayed. A place where hands were raised. A place where praise was rendered. And God was magnified. The temple was a place of worship. God says in Isaiah 56 verse 7, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Just as that temple was devoted to God as a place of worship, these bodies are to be places where God is worshipped. The truth is, these bodies will render worship to one God or another. Right here in our text, we see proof of that. These Corinthian believers, with their mouths, they acknowledge Christ. Then with their bodies, they participated in worship of Diana in all sexual things that are, were immoral. The question may arise, or the question that you might have in, uh, in your head this morning, how can I worship God with my body? The answers are many, but here are a few. Romans 12, verse 1 and 2 tells us, present yourself as a living sacrifice. Enter in, into a covenant with God. That you will use your body for nothing that will dishonor and degrade his name. Jeremiah 23 verse 3. Another way that you can honor your God with your body. Stay in prayer. Take your body aside from the world. And go to the Lord on a regular basis and pray to him. Nothing glorifies the Lord quiet like people who trust him enough. To call on him in faith. Another way you can worship God with your body. Hebrews 13 verse 5. Pay attention to his presence. Never forget that Jesus is ever with you. Learn to walk in the knowledge of his abiding presence. You, see, you know what? Many of us, if we take some time and acknowledge the presence of God, whether we are at work or at home, many things that we fall into, we will not fall into them at all. Because when someone is in front of you, you tend to behave what? Differently. When people can see you, you tend to do things differently because you do not want to get in trouble. But Jesus is ever present. He's always with us. When you are on 114 driving and giving a finger, I'm not going to say which one, <laughs> to someone, if you pay attention that Jesus is in the car with you, he's watching you, you will not use that finger. When you're at home, When there's no one watching, what you do on your phone, what you do on your computer, if you pay attention that Jesus is watching you, that he's working in the room with you, you wouldn't go on that side. So we need to practice the presence of God and acknowledge the presence of God. If we do that, it may prevent you from engaging in activities that will dishonor his name. Another way to worship the Lord with your body, praise him continually. That's Hebrews 13 verse 15. Make a decision in your mind, make a decision in your heart that no circumstance in life, no bump in the world, will stop you from having a thankful heart of praise. 
before the Lord. Yes, no matter what, to have a thankful heart before the Lord. Another way to worship God with your body. Romans 6 verse 16. Yield yourself to the Lord. And he will use you for his glory. Submit to him. And he will use you for his glory. Can you honestly say that you are using your body as a place of worship before the Lord? Can I honestly say that I am using my body as a place of worship before the Lord? When I talk about this, the word of God is for me as well. So that I do not stand before you as a hypocrite. Am I asking myself the same question? Not just a place of consecration. Not just a place of worship. Being the temple of the Holy Spirit also means you are a place of service. The temple in Jerusalem was a place where people carried out the duties that they had been given by the Lord. Things such as the sacrifice, such as tithe, the offering, the prayers, they were all carried out at the temple. It was a place where duties were performed. These fleshly temples are also places where we are to carry out the duties we have been given by God. There are many areas where we are duty bound before the Lord. We are duty bound to be a witness for the Lord. We are duty bound to worship him. We are duty bound to go to him in prayer every single day. We are duty bound to give financially to the work of the gospel. We are duty bound to be obedient to God. We are duty bound to live in holiness before the Lord. We are duty bound to live in righteousness before God. We are duty bound to build up one another. We are not duty bound to do gossiping. No. We are duty bound to build up one another. And in thousands of other ways, we are duty bound before God. Not just a place of consecration. Not just a place of worship. Not just a place of service. Being the temple of the Holy Spirit also means you are a place of death. The temple in Jerusalem was the scene of many deaths. Millions of animals were taken there and slain on the altars in obedience to God's command. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I talked to the pastors, uh, Pastor Matt, Pastor Jean, and my wife, they know this. There are five things I hate. And after reading that text and thinking about the temple in the Old Testament, I think I can add another, another one to my list. Instead of just five, there will be six things I hate. The first thing I hate is the devil. And I'm going to give you the, in, the, in the order that I hate them. Okay? So I'm going to quiz you on that. The first thing I hate is the devil. The st- second thing I hate is Apple products. I don't care whether you have an iPhone or not. That's, that's your business, not mine. But I don't like Apple products. The third thing I hate is getting stuck in traffic. The fourth thing I hate is Starbucks coffee. <laughs> I really don't care what you think. I don't like Starbucks coffee. I think, I think they're they really taking you. Uh, number five, 
I'm not going to tell you that one. But my wife know and the pastors know. So <laughs> that's for me to know and for you to find out. <laughs> but number six, I will add, based on thinking of the temple as a place of death, will be smelling like food. I hate smelling like food. <laughs> and for the priests, they weren't just there to lead the people to worship. They were butchers. So they were, they were butchers. Millions of animals were brought there to the temple for sacrifice. And the priests were in charge of killing all of them and burning them on the altar. So can you think about that? The stench of death, the stench of animals. As a priest, now I can come here with a nice suit on me and blah, 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 and come here. But the priest in the temple will be a bit different. By the day, they will be bloody. They will, have, they will smell like burnt animals. They will smell like food. Can you believe that? And my wife would tell me, sweetie, what you did today? Oh, I burned some animals. The next day, what did you do today? I burned some animals again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't like that at all. So that's number six of the things that I hate, smelling like food. Yes, the temple was a place of death. While there was praise, while there was singing and worship in that great place, there was also the stench of death. Every time anyone went to the temple, they were immediately confronted with a death scene. As the temple of the Holy Spirit, you and I are challenged to be dead to certain things in this world. According to the Bible, we have been born again. As a result, we are a totally new creation. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 tells us, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, we are expected to be dead to our old way of life. We are expected to be dead to our old way of life. In Colossians 3 verse 1 through 9, we are told to put off or to consider ourselves dead to certain activities. Dead to fornication, sex outside of marriage. Dead to impurity of thought. Dead to impurity of life. Dead to evil desires and passions. Dead to greed. Not, be, not being satisfied with what God has already given you. Dead to a lying lips. I've been doing, reading Isaiah during my uh, quiet time with the Lord. And in Isaiah chapter 2, you see that God is rejecting a worship service. God said to the Jews and through Isaiah, don't come to me with your offerings anymore. Don't come to me with your sacrifices. Because you are a violent people. You are an immoral people. And you do false worship. Think about this. These were people who go to the temple every, to worship every week. They bring the sacrifices every time. They were doing the church thing. Just like we are doing today. And God said to them, get out. I'm tired of you. I'm tired of your prayers. 
I am tired of your sacrifices. I'm tired of you coming before me like that. Get out. People were going to church every week. Because what they were doing is we come here for worship. We do the rituals. We go to the emotions. Once we walk out of those doors, we live just like the world live. And God say, I do not want that. What you do here should impact what you do out there. When you come before me here, it should show as well in the world. If not, get out and don't bring me your sacrifices and do not come to me with your prayers. Isaiah chapter 2. Dead to fornication. Dead to impurity of thought. Dead to evil desires. Dead to lying. Dead to those things that are sinful before God. What this boils down to is that God wants us to retrain ourselves and reign in our bodies. We are to control them and not the other way around. If you do not control your body and its passion, it will control you. Not just a place of consecration, not just a place of worship, not just a place of service, not just a place of death, being the temple of the Holy Spirit also means you are a place of representation. When people saw the temple standing in Jerusalem, they were reminded of God. Let me say that again. When they saw the temple standing, they were reminded of God. When people see the temple, they will know or be reminded that there is a God in heaven who loves sinners and has made a way for their redemption. These bodies are the temples of the Lord or our witness to the world that we have been redeemed. Every time the world sees a child of God, Every time the world sees you, they see or they should see a manifestation of the power and the grace of the Almighty God. You, your life may be the only sermon some people will ever see. Someone once said, Preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. Let me say that again. Preach the gospel always. If necessary, use words. In other way, it is your life that they see. It is Christ in you that they see. Not my ugly face. Not my big belly. Speaking of which, which uh, not, not too long ago, I was at home. Uh, this has nothing to do with the sermon, okay? <laughs> uh, I, was, I was in the living room uh, with my daughter, actually, one of them, Abigail. And she saw my belly, and she thought, she said, Papi, you have a belly on you. Yes. I was shocked. Yeah, yeah, yes. Papi, you have a belly on you. So... And I turned to my wife and I asked, and I said, did you read what she said to me? And what she, by the way, my wife didn't say anything. And I, I, I came to the church and I told someone about that too. And someone, <laughs> that church member, I still pray for you though. That church member told me, uh, from the mouth of babe. <laughs> <laughs> but I still pray for her. I still pray for her. <laughs> I didn't get comfort from my wife. When, when my daughter told me that, I did not get comfort either from the church people when I told them that. But uh, nothing to do with the sermon again. But when they see my body, when they see me, 
do people see Christ? Or do they see someone who is just living for the world? Your life, again, may be the only sermon some people will ever see. Whether you like it or not, you are a witness. Your life either speak well of Jesus or your life bring dishonor to him by the things that you do and how you live. And I'm speaking about my life as well, not just yours. What kind of statement are you making about Jesus in your life today? Let me ask that question again. What kind of statement are you making about Jesus with your life? Being the temple of the Holy Spirit means you are a place of consecration. It means you are a place of worship. It means you are a place of service. It means that you are a place of death. And it means that you are a place of representation. Yes, it is your body. But if you are saved, it is still the temple of God. You are not your own. So how are you treating the temple of God? How are you treating the temple of God this afternoon? Are you totally consecrated to Jesus this afternoon? Are you using your body to worship him? Are you fully executing your duties before the Lord? Have you put to death those things in your life that dishonor him? Is your life a pleasing display of the saving grace of God? And all those questions I just asked, I asked them about myself, to myself as well. And only you can answer those questions. And only I can answer my own que those questions for myself. If you are not in Christ, you are not saved. If you are not in Christ, you are not God's temple. But you can be, if you call on the name of Jesus, he will save you by his grace. And if it is the case for some of you here this morning, please do not delay. Give your life to Christ and you will be the temple of his spirit. And to those of you who are already in Christ, who are already in Christ, know that you are saved and know that you are not your own. You may live like it, but you are not your own if you are in Christ. Therefore, honor God with your body. Honor God. With your body. Let's pray. Dear Lord, please forgive us of our sins, Father. For we know they are many. Sometimes because, oh Lord, we just want to sin, oh Lord. We lack sinning. We lack whatever we're doing, Father. We endure it. But sometimes, oh Lord, we sin because we do not understand truly, oh Lord, your word in, your, in the Christian life, Father. Regardless, oh Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. We do not want, oh Lord, people that come here every week, oh Lord, And that for you, Lord, to say to us, stop praying me, stop coming in my presence. But we want, oh Lord, our lives, oh Lord, to be a pleasing sacrifice before you. That the way that we are here, oh Lord, in this place, that, that's the same way, oh Lord, we are when we go out, oh Lord. Because we know that we are the temple of your spirit, Founder.
that you dwell in us. Thank you, O Lord, for a word of knowledge today. Thank you for this word of exhortation, Father. Help us, O Lord, not to harden our hearts, Father, but to let your word, O Lord, have an impact in us, O Lord, so that we can be a really good, a great display of your mercy, a great display of your grace, a great display, O Lord, of your redemption, Father. Help us, Lord, not to take your grace for granted. Not to take what you did on the cross for us, O Lord, for granted, or as a license to live however we want, Father. But help us, O Lord, to desire righteousness, to desire purity, to desire holiness, to desire, O Lord, to glorify you, O Lord, with our bodies, Father. Help us, Lord, leave this place in the power of your spirit. We love you, Lord. Thank you for everything. Amen.